Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and I'm here with my good buddy Justin Kerr, FLW Pro, has been fishing as a pro since 2002. Okay, so that's a long time, <laughs> so maybe older than some of you've been around, but yeah. yes, long time. And today we're talking about spring fishing. Justin has, has fished, you fished all over the world, all over the, the United States. Mm -hmm. Lots of different situations, even did some guiding, lots of different conditions for yes. that. So let's talk a little bit about spring fishing. How, what is your approach as the season go, progresses? Like how do we start off in, in pre-spawn, right when those fish are starting to move up? Yeah, you know, spring's one of my favorite times of the year to fish. So um, I always have done really well during the spring. And uh, one of my favorite things to do is, is throw a jig and crawfish. Uh, crawfish is a major player beginning in the early in the uh, year, you know, going winter and going to spring, that transition time is is incredible for for crayfish. They they really love to fatten up on them. So you know, I'll throw a, a red uh, evergreen crankbait or a, a brown jig. And mm -hmm. one of my favorite things is pork. When they don't make it too much pork anymore, but right, I right. love throwing pork early in the year. And I uh, I like to you know fish secondary points and towards the back of the cove where they're moving or up a river where they're we're going to move to spawn. So. And when That's, you're doing this is when the water temps what around 47 50 or uh so? yeah about 48 to 53 when they hit about that 53 is usually about a magic number when they really start moving up and uh that's when I go to that, that jig and the mm -hmm. crankbait mm -hmm. and then as the water warms up you're getting closer to that sweet spawning time so the, the fish will be moving a lot yeah. shallower yes. they'll probably be looking at what bays coves yeah always bays flats. or you know a lot of places have rivers and uh they'll move upper rivers to spawn and you know bays and you know, obviously, as the year progresses, they you know go to certain spots. But always early in the year, you want to go back to the back of the uh, pockets or up a river, and uh, start start there. Start looking around there, and and go from there. Throw a jig, crankbaits. Uh, sometimes spinner baits are really good early in the year too. Mm -hmm. And then as a spawn, it's kind of mm -hmm. like whatever, right? They yeah. Just want to chomp on whatever you can throw. And it, it just depends. You know, I mean, uh, obviously, on during the spawn, sometimes as the spawn comes later. Sometimes they won't go back, back up those rivers. You can actually find them on the main lake or main lake points they'll spawn on, and especially smallmouth uh, where I live, Lake Havasu, they'll, they'll spawn out in the main points, um, you know, middle of spawning. So mm. it's kind of a little different, but, you know, you just got to keep that open mind and, and, and fish fish with an open mind. You, ha you have to do that. Mm -hmm. And, and during this time, this is, you know, spring is notorious for having lots of fronts come mm -hmm. through. Yeah. Screwing up fishing. <laughs> My buddy Justin here fished a tournament two days ago where it dumped down rain. Yeah. You wouldn't expect that in the desert, but it poured. Big, huge front came through. Yes. How do you adjust to those type of fronts when they keep they keep coming through and messing up? They get up shallow and then they're gone. Like, how do you stay on top of you them? You know, knowing, knowing that that's going to happen is, is a good thing. And also, like I said, fishing with an open mind. And, and if they're not biting what, you, what you're going to fish for, say, you know, you have some fish that are moving in the back of a pocket and you go back there and the the storm pushed them off well they got to go somewhere so you look for the nearest structure or out to the nearest point uh somewhere you saw them they're, they're not going to be far because they still want to be in that general area they'll just back off and you might have to slow down a little bit or or you make them react one of the two so you don't have to go back out fish way deep no, no. just a little bit deeper a little bit than yeah where you were at. yeah that's how i usually that's how i usually approach it mm -hmm. or sometimes they're still there and I'll, you know, I'll try to make them react on a crankbait or mm -hmm. something like that, or a vibration bait, make do you, them react. Do you think they'll bury up right up in the cover and you gotta dig them out that uh, way? Or sometimes, year, no, no, no they're, they're more outside. They'll, they'll sit down in the mud, keep, keep their bellies warm. Mm -hmm. This time of year, they, they like to do that a lot. Now, what, what's your favorite baits to use at post-spawn? Post-spawn, uh, top water and flipping is usually my, my two go-to things, uh, frog fishing, mm -hmm. uh, top water walking baits and mm -hmm. flipping. Uh, I love having a flipping stick in my hand and mm -hmm. and uh, that's usually what I do. Floating worms. I find floating worms they, are a killer right, like after, right after the spawn. Really? Just the you know, couple of weeks, they don't last long, mm -hmm. but you know, two or three weeks after the spawn, you put a little swivel with a leader and a floating yep. worm and I don't know what it is that time of year, but they really like floating worms. Oh, I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a floating worm too, too much, but I'll definitely try it. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for your hey, tips. No I problem. appreciate it so much, Justin. Thanks for being no with problem. us. Try it out this spring. I bet you'd be a lot a better angler trying out Justin's tips. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com.